Let's learn how variables work in JavaScript. I'm at a web page that is https marriottschool.byu.edu slash infosys. You can be on any web page you want, but what I want to do is access the inspector. This is done by pressing Control shift i right mouse clicking and choosing Control shift i inspect or on the Mac you could choose inspect or command option i so we're going to inspect and bring up the inspector tools and then we're going to go to the console window and this is where we can type in JavaScript just to try things out so first thing I want to do what is a variable a variable is simply simply a holding place that you might use to store some data and then grab that data later on and do something special with it it's like a, a pair of it's like a pocket on a pair of pants you can put something in it and hold it. Now in JavaScript, those pockets on your pants aren't really designed for a specific thing, whereas other languages like C Sharp or C++, they say when you create a variable, you have to know what type of data you are going to store in that variable because they are what we call a strongly typed language. JavaScript is a loosely typed language. So you can get away with putting anything you want in that variable and then later on you could take that, that, that content out and replace it with something else of a different data type. Meaning we can work with strings or numbers or Boolean values and one variable could hold any of that data. You don't specify the data type. So how do we create a variable? Remember, a variable is simply to use or hold data that we might use later on. Maybe it's a name or an age or a salary or a GPA. It's just a place to store information. The way we create a variable in JavaScript is you type the word VAR and you do it in lowercase characters because JavaScript is case sensitive. Capital VAR is not the same. You might realize that working in the console, you don't have to type VAR and it will create a variable. But we're going to be good programmers and we're always going to use the word VAR to create the variable. So VAR space and then give it the name of something. You can call it anything you want. You could say the letter X, but that's not very descriptive. I like to name my variables uh, some word that is very descriptive. For instance, if I wanted to store an age, I would use a little i and the word age. Now the reason I say little i is because that means it's going to be an integer value or a number. And then I could put a semicolon and then press enter. That would create a variable in memory called i age. I could then say I age is equal to or assigned some value. We'll say 55 semicolon. This would now take the value of 55 and store it. That's an equal sign. Store it to I age. I'm going to make this bigger so you can see that. And I age was the variable that we created in memory. So somewhere out in memory, we have a new pocket. And in that pocket, we're going to store the number 55, enter. So that variable now holds 55. How do I know? I could say alert. Remember, alert is your alert box, I age. So that's going to say display in a pop-up box the contents of I age. And it says 55. So we know that we created a variable, stored a value to it, and then we retrieved the contents of that variable. Let's say that we created a variable called salary. And so you could just say the word salary. You don't have to specify what it's going to hold. I do it for readability's sake. A lot of people don't do this. This is called Hungarian notation. And Hungarian notation says that you are going to uh, use a letter in your variables to make your code more readable. And it was created by a guy named Charles Simonyi. He was, uh, of course, hungry, from Hungary. And this says that this variable someday should hold an integer value. 
But JavaScript doesn't care what you put in there. I could do this. I could say I age is equal to double quote Greg double quote. JavaScript doesn't care one bit because JavaScript is a loosely typed language. But we want to be good structured programmers. And so when we create a variable, we want to make sure that the same data type stays in that variable. If we need a different data type, then we can go ahead and create a new variable. Let's go ahead and clear the console by clicking this button or by pressing Control L. And let's create another variable. Variable name. Actually, let's say first name. Now, when you create a variable in JavaScript, you cannot have spaces in the variable name. You could put an underscore if you wanted to do that, but you could do something like that. Or you could use what they call camel case. Camel case says the first letter is lowercase and the next letter of a word is uppercase. And this is pretty common. We created the variable by putting a semicolon and pressing enter. And then later on, we assigned a value. But if we wanted to, we could create the variable and go ahead and assign the value. Var last name equals mouse. Notice when I type in data with quotes, this becomes a string variable because it's holding letters. I could then say var full name equals first name plus quote space quote plus last name semicolon. This is called concatenation and it means you take one value and glue it to another value or combine it with. So if I now said alert on full name we should see Mickey space mouse. What if I wanted it to be last name comma space first name? I could have said full name equals. I don't need to redefine full name because the variable has already been created. Full name is equal last name plus double quote comma space double quote plus first name. This now says take last name which is mouse combine it with comma space and combine it with the first name which is Mickey and then if I wanted to do an alert again and I just did that by pressing my up arrows we'll see mouse comma space Mickey so this is a string variable how you declare it how you assign it values and how you can do concatenation or combine it with other things let's clear that screen let's create another variable let's call it salary and let's go ahead and assign it a value when we create it. Let's say that somebody makes $50,000, semicolon. And then let's say, wow, a miracle happens. You got a raise. You got a 5% raise. So you could take the word salary. In fact, let's do this. Var raise percent equals 0 0.05. So that is 5%, and it's a, a numeric value, but it also is a floating point value because it has decimals. And then we could say the salary, the current salary, is going to be equal to the salary times the raised percent. And if I just did that, I wonder what would happen. Salary is currently 50,000. And if you just multiplied it by the raised percent, it would be 50,000 times 0 0.05 and assigned back to salary. That wouldn't work. If I said var amount raise, by the way, notice we didn't do camel case on this one. We should have. Alert amount raise we know that we're going to get a $2,500 raise. So we could now say salary is equal to salary plus amount raise. 
alert salary. And we can see we have our salary plus our raise. So this is a way you can create numeric vari variables and variables with decimal points and work with them. Now what would happen if I did this though? What if I said var name equals buddy the elf and if we said var salary equals whoops sorry about that five but we're gonna have a mistake there so let's say salary equals fifty thousand and then we said alert name plus double quote space double quote plus salary run it now it says buddy space 50,000 how can it do this because salary is a numeric but name is a string when you start combining strings with numerics numerics also become a string so be aware of that what if we did something like this what if we said var sum we created a variable called sum and then we said var input 1 is equal to 10 var input 2 is equal to 50 and var new name is equal to kitty and then I said var new value is equal to new name which was kitty plus input 1 which was 10 plus input 2 which was 50. Let's see what happens if I alert new value. It says kitty 10 50 meaning even though this input 1 had a numeric of 10, input 2 had a numeric of 50, kitty had a string value in that new name. And so it said, take a string plus a numeric plus a numeric. And it just turns all the numerics into strings. What if I had done it like this? And I said, let's take input 1 plus input to and combine it with new name. In fact, um, that should work. Let's try that. Okay, let's alert new value again. And what does it say? Now it says kitty 60. Because what it does is it says you're a numeric, you're a numeric, you're in parentheses, so I'm going to do you first. So that's equal to 60 and then we turn it into a string to concatenate it with another string. In other words, if you ever do strings with numerics, the system will try to turn them all into a string. Unless you put parentheses around some of the numerics, and then it will execute the numeric expressions first before it concatenates it with the string. So what are variables? They're simply pockets in your pants to hold data. And that's what we use them for. Holding data that we can work with later on.